This is an overview of direct to garment. Um, this is just a 10,000 foot view of the marketplace. A lot, most people, first question they're going to ask, why the digital t-shirt business instead of traditional screen printing? Anybody here a screen printer? You are. So you, you, you'll appreciate a lot of the interest. Number one, screen printing has a learning curve. Now we've got a couple, couple new sales ladies in the sales department and I started describing screen printing to them and their eyes like, it takes that much to do. Especially when you start to get into doing really high end type of prints. You know, you don't want in two color, you know, got milk shirts and stuff for the little league. It's not that tough. But when you start dealing with colors registering with each other, you start dealing with needing to do more tonal type of things, high end type of graphics, it's a bear. It's a whole new skill set. Most people have a grasp on an art, on being on handling the art. By the way, if you can't handle art, you have no clue about graphic software, buying one of our printers will not make you an artist. Okay? No more than buying the Rachel Ray knives off of the Food Network turning you into a chef. All right, you still have to deal with the, the artwork. That being said, once the artwork's done, you hit print on your DTG, you start printing shirts. You hit print when you're doing screen printing, you start, burning, you start printing films to be able to burn screens. All right? The more complex of the design, number of colors, detail, really fine detail, you know, all that makes it much harder to master screen printing. Again, simple, small, small number of colors, easy to do a screen printing. Understanding how to set up multicolored art is not easy because you're printing, a human in a lot of cases is pulling a squeegee. You're gonna, if you don't use the same pressure every time, your ink's gonna flood a little bit more onto the shirt. You have to take that into account. If, you're, if you don't put in as much pressure, you're, you're gonna get a more, the normal size print. You have to take into that through things called traps and chokes. Basically, you're taking into account, you have to overlap your inks somewhat, slightly. If not, you're gonna start getting gaps in the shirt. A lot of work for somebody who hasn't done this stuff before and it's just not logical to them. Another point for most people is space. I mean, literally to set it up, you need a 20 by 20 area minimum to set up a 4-4 type of, 4-4 or 4-6, 6-6 type of setup screen printing. So not a lot of operations. We have, a lot of our customers are, are cottage industry. They work out of their house. They don't have room to set up a 20 by 20. You definitely need 220 volt or it will eat you alive for electric. If you buy a belt dryer that's a 110, you might as well go ahead and plan on taking out loans to pay your electric bill. And to get into a really good belt dryer, you need three phase, which no, I don't know anywhere in America where they'll allow you to put three phase into a residential area. Right? It's, it's a challenge. And it's not cheap even if you're allowed to put it in. If you don't have it, it, it can cost you thousands of dollars to put three phase in. <coughs> you have to deal with venting for your belt dryer because you are basically, you know, you're heating up a PVC and you have to vent that to the outside. Neighbors don't usually like that when they start smelling. Like, Why does everything around here smell like burnt plastic, right? And in a lot of states, I put legal, it's, it's against code in a lot of areas. I know in Pinellas County, you're not allowed to have a screen print operation on, in your, your home because of these, these issues, plus the issues of reclaiming your screens and whatnot, the waste that's generated from screen printing. Environmental concerns, though they're not as big as they used to be, the Yanks aren't as poisonous as they used to be. Um, it's not known as, screen printing is not known as a grain process, right? In a lot of Italy, they've actually banned screen printing. That's why DTG is crazy in Italy. They, they just do it not just because of the chemicals that are involved with it, but you'll, you'll test it. You use a ton of water, don't you, to clean up. Yes. Yeah, when you go to clean up, you're using a pressure washer, you're blowing your screens out, and you know, those screens are sealed. It's not like you just hit them with your hose and the screen comes out. You have to blow them out. You use a lot of water. And that water then is contaminated with the, the emulsion, any screen that wasn't scooped off of the screen and whatnot. So, and that, that becomes a positive. This is a sales point for DTG. You, you're, it's a green market. You can go to people who are green sensitive. I have customers who have actually set up full blown green. They only do bamboo and hemp type of shirts, right? They, they even take it to the shirt level. I love the picture, right? Mess. Do I need to say more? All right. If you're an embroiderer, and that's your main business, you initially when you think of screen printing, the first thing you think about is ew, it's messy, right? And it's sticky and it's stinky. And it's not really conducive to put into an embroidery environment. 
because it's more of an, a garage warehouse type of setup, whereas Directed Garment is a digital product, an embroidery digital or a sensitive product. You don't put embroidery out in a warehouse very often, especially if you're doing screen printing because you have a lot of um, adhesives floating around from your spray tax and whatnot. It's a saturated marketplace. If you go up to Manta, Manta shows 10 to 12,000 screen printers in the United States, which is a ridiculously low number. Jason, how many do you guys estimate you that are screen printers in the United States? How many? Maybe 5,000. Oh, I would guess. Would you say 25, 35,000? At least. I'm talking to you. I don't know every single town. Yeah, every town. I mean, I would bet you there are, I bet you that there are 2,500 or so in Florida. All right. I know there's one here that works in our office who is off the grid. He works in his garage and he does screen printing on the side. And a ton of people out there doing screen printing. The equipment for screen printing, relatively inexpensive. There are a lot of people who get into the industry, hate it, sell their stuff secondhand, right? And the good thing about it is screen printing equipment, it's not digital, right? You clean it up, throw a little paint on it, oil it up, it's as good as new. So that's a downside to it. It could be an upside if you had to add screen printing. But any Yahoo who's willing to get up on Craigslist and patient can buy a screen printing operation for pennies on the dollar. And then, then you run into some people who are running a cottage industry, don't have a lot in the game. They're not vested heavily into the game. They've got a decent setup because they bought it second or third or fourth hand. And they'll play print with very low margins. I call it beer money. Right? They're not they're not doing it to make a living, supplement it, they're doing it for mad money. You know, they like to golf, they like to hunt, they like to go to the mud bog, whatever it is. They don't doing it for hey, if I spend an hour and a half tonight I can knock out 120 shirts, and make two dollars a piece on them. Woohoo! That's great money for them. Whereas you've got an operation and all the money invested in your advertising and whatnot, you can't compete with them. Generally, high volume, low margin work because you're doing larger runs, people are going to expect better pricing per garment. We'll get into that at the end, we'll go into some pricing. And it means you've got to, you've got to crank out a lot. The challenge with it is, is now your shirt is a more expensive component than the decoration is. So when you screw up, you're losing, you're losing more than you were going to make on the shirt. That's not usually the case with direct garment. Now, DTG, the direct garment printing business. Relatively short learning curve, again, assuming you understand the whole graphics thing, and that's what Heath will be talking to you all about in this next seminar. Um, the main learning issues are artwork setup, just tweaking it from what you would do for embroidery or screen printing, and learning how to do the proper maintenance on the machine. If you don't hear the word maintenance today 30 times, slap me or the nearest person to you has a cold dusty shirt on. All right? Minimal space requirement. Everything in the system pretty much is 110 volt. Uh, you can set it up in a, in a spare room in a house if you want to. You generally got to have a, other than the pretreatment set up, you know, you can set it up. We've had, he's been to a number of houses, set up on the dining room table, set up in a den, set up in a spare bedroom, set, set up in an air conditioned part of the room. Which one is yours? It's in a spare bedroom. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, you had the face. Um, so you see right here, that's all that's needed. No special venting required. Literally, the only bear is, is pre-treating, right? And you'd probably do that in the garage yes. or in the backyard. Yes. Okay. Because yes. <laughs> <laughs> pre-treatment, while it's not toxic or anything, it's sticky. It's basically salt water and glue, so you don't want to do it in a spare bedroom. Um, you know, a lot of people do it in the garage. They may do it in their sink for the washing machine or something like that. Yeah, we've Pushing hose down. We feel like a washout, like yep. a, like a shower. Everybody thinks of a shower stall. Yep. It's just like a wooden thing that we put like a glaze over. Yep. Yeah, so you'll see the one we have out here. It's actually, it's actually that uh, OSB that we painted with a good latex that's sealed up. That's been out there six years, and it's still holding up well because it was sealed with the OSB. Mm -hmm. It's a green process. The inks are all water-based, which is a good thing. Minimal waste. You know, you throw out little bottles of waste ink, but it's not anything near what you do for screen printing, right? Um, very little water consumed in product. These are things that can be a concern to you, but if they're not a major concern to you, if you're not a tree hugger or you know a greenie type of individual, they're still great selling tools. All right, nobody is going to not do business with you because you're green. 
people will not do business with you if you're not green. So you might as well tell them, all right? Minimal mess, other than the pre-treatment as I mentioned, no big deal. Adding a pre-treatment machine knocks that cleanup stuff down 85-90%. <coughs> it's an emerging marketplace. The custom nature of the business allows for very specialized niches. You know, you could pick left-handed lawn bowling midgets and do shirts for them. I mean, literally, sorry, there are there any midgets in the room, are there? Yeah. Or did I have been in a lawn <coughs> But you actually can get way out on the branch. And I'll give you an example of that here in a minute. But you get way out on the branch. And the further out you are on the branch, the sweeter the fruit is, which is where the higher volume is. So it allows, you know, I've had people go, there are no printers in my area. And I'm going, okay, and I'm pulling up three right now in your area. But this guy deals with, he does Civil War reenactments. All of his stuff's that. This company over here, they do faith-based shirts. This company over here, ladies doing all the shirts of the Little League. They're, just because they're in such vertical niches, they're not out there competing in the same general pool that screen printers would. The ability to allow the customer to order as many as they want, as many colors as they want, without vari with variable data, size of the image, you're not pigeonholing them by screen fees, minimums, and setup charges. All right? The ability, if you do any shirt jobs for women, for like uh, cancer three days, right? It never fails. The girl who wears a youth large is going to stand like next to the girl who wears a men's 2XL. And if you use the same size graphic by screen printing it, somebody's going to feel self-conscious. By doing this, it allows you to size. Now, you don't get crazy. You don't size it for every size. But most of the times I'm doing shirts for women's events, I've done a lot for the National Wild Turkey Federation for women's events. I always design it in three sizes, say an 8, 10, and 12-inch graphic. And it'll, it'll cover two to three shirt sizes really? within that range. It looks exactly the same, and it looks the same when it's on their body. And that's huge. You know, you'll see that the women will be wearing these shirts, that, especially the oversized shirts, they'll be wearing these shirts two and three events later when you see them coming because they don't feel self-conscious about a postage stamp on their chest. All right? Same thing goes if you're doing family reunions and stuff, when they want to give the kids and the, and the grandkids and stuff smaller shirts. Reorders are quick and easy. You don't have to look for your films. You don't have to reburn your screens. You just have to remember where you saved it on your hard drive. Pull it up and you can print. Again, emerging marketplace means it's, there's less competition, better opportunity to make better margins. All right, as long as you compete against the right people, you don't need to be going after the 500 piece jobs. That should be screen printed. All right, the window of sense is bigger than most people think it is. But if some company comes to you and says we do a thousand shirts a month, two color, I want to give you all my business. <coughs> you're not going to make any money on it. Because screen printers, you'll see when I show you the illustration at the end, screen printers will compare to you. Because when they go in motion, they're going to own you. The key is, is to get as much done before they go in motion. And that's where you make your money. That's really where the window of profit is, high potential profit is in direct regard. And print on demand reduces the need for to project very far out in the future about your inventory of garments. It's not like if you have somebody who does, you do a bunch of business with them, you have to print a bunch of shirts up and hope you chose the right sizes and the right colors. With this, you just keep an inventory of blank garments and you fill on demand. Uh, when Directed Garment first came out, everybody's going, this was the death knell to screen printing. I go, no, it's not. It's the death knell to transfers. Because transfers are the same mentality. Plastisol transfers go with this mentality. Just keeping blank garments around, fulfilling on demand with your heat press with plastisol transfers. However, you still have to buy large quantities as, as plastisol transfers. Can write. You give up variable data. You give up variable size. But it's a much closer model than screen printing is. So that was one of the first places. In fact, literally Stolls, who owns Transfer Express, which is one of the largest players in the transfer market, they came out with ads against direct-to-garment printing because it was hurting their business to transfer express so much. And interestingly now, they just signed on to become a distributor for a direct-to-garment printer. They, they gave up. <laughs> they waved the white flag. Again, they can order as many as they want. We already went through that part. Who doesn't want to work more, work less for more money? You're making more money on each shirt. Now, who should buy it? Let's start off with existing screen printers. You can handle your short run work. 
which is a bear, and big screen printers will tell you this, I embarrass them all the time at trade shows. So what happens when a customer who you do a lot of business come with and, and says, I need like 14 more of those shirts you printed for me four months ago? They look down at their feet and go, you lose money on it, don't you? They'll burn six screens, set up their press, and they'll print somebody less than two dozen shirts to keep them happy as a customer. That's very admirable. I want to compete against that guy all day long because his, his mindset's wrong. You don't lose money on anything, and it's wrong if you have customers who insist on you losing money. If you have customers who insist on you lose money, get rid of them. You don't need customers like that. You want customers that respect what you do, and they're going to pay you for the, the job that you do. But it does allow you to never tell your customers, no, that's the other side of the coin, which is I need 14 shirts here. Go away. I don't want to do them for you, right? Then you risk the guy going down the street, finding a guy who has a direct power printer who also screen prints. And he may lose all of his business. If keeping your customers at home, use it to do fill-in orders without the expense and hassle of the screens. Um, some screen printers actually save their burned screens, like for a long, long time, which is expensive, space consuming, and it becomes an issue of logistics where the heck is everything. Um, with, with, with direct to garment, what you want to do is a screen printer, when you deliver somebody in a large order, take the same image and print it digitally for them and hand it to them and right now, right up front, like a prenuptial agreement, right? I'm delivering these shirts. These are the screen printed ones. You want these, six screens, $30 a screen, I got to do a print of minimum of 36. Now I'll give them to you at the same price, these were seven and a half dollars but you got all that other expense. Then you hand them the digital one and say, I'll do these one, one a piece at a time for you, one shirt at a time, they're $14 a piece. You, and oh, by the way, here's an extra shirt for you. You want to make me comfortable with the way it washes and stuff, here you go. So you set that bar early on, it's much easier for the customer then to make the decision of what they're gonna pay to have it up, done. You know, and just you quit losing money. So many guys, do this. I mean, it, I would bet 50% of decent sized screen printers will print jobs that they lose money on for big customers. A, a rule that I learned very on is I've been in the industry about 23 years. If you fail to place value on your time, your customers will soon, soon learn to do the exact same thing. If you don't value your time enough to charge for it, they're not going to value it enough to f feel that you're worth paying. This allows, also allows fashion customers clothing lines to test a new design beforehand if they're committing to large volumes. Allow you to test the waters, and it, that way you can hit a winner. Instead of having to print out a thousand shirts, find out what it did. You know, your mom thought it was a great design, but nobody else did. Your mom was probably lying to you in the first place. It really wasn't a great design. You can do samples of the screen printer. You can deliver a sample to a customer. You can walk into a business whose business you're trying to earn and you can actually show them a mock-up of what you can do for them. The proactive fill-in, I already went through that. Basically, giving them an option of a way to say yes. You're not saying no, you say option A, option B, and you present an option A and option B right up front to them. And you'd be amazed how many times they come back and they start, you know, we really like the digital one. I don't care if they're 14 bucks a piece. Our customers love them. So how do you do them all on digital? Add-ons. Screen printers are really good, and most direct to garment and people who do apparel, they're really good at producing things. They're really bad at selling things, right? Your fulfillment house, in a lot of cases. You know, sometimes you have a husband and wife, one of them fancies himself the marketer, and the other one's the production person, but typically, you're not the greatest sales organization. This gives you the, the ability to make it easy to sell stuff to people. You've got a captive audience, you just printed up, 288 shirts with this guy. When he picks up his, or you deliver it, hit him a golf towel with the same logo on it. He's got a, if he just had a baby, hit him a little, get a little infant shirt, print the infant shirt up with the same logo and hand it to him. All right? The, the easiest customer to sell, person to sell something to, is somebody who you already have a relationship, who trusts you and knows you do good work. Make it easy. Do add-ons to your existing stuff. Get his little tote bags. Print the logo on it. And then give him that shirt I told you to show him that's a sample of the digital print for the filling, put it inside the bag and it's got the logo on it as well. 
Again, offer variable data. People don't think about this until you show them. Show them three examples of the same graphic on three, you know, go with the women, you know, a small shirt, a large shirt, and a 2XL. And show them the graphic in an 8, a 10, and a 12 inch size. It will make it easy to sell it. And then offer variable data. Let's say you're going after a chain, a local chain that's got four barbecue spots in your area. Go to them with a graphic that has variable data room for the address, website, and phone number of the local restaurant, which is not something that would be practical for a screen printer to do in a lot of cases. Names and numbers on the back of shirts, you know, we're not talking about, you know, real soccer uniforms and things like that, but for rec, rec leagues, you know, intramurals, things like that. Giving them the ability to have a directed garment printed number on the back, it's a lot more comfortable on a, on a cotton shirt than the, the vinyl letters are. It's a lot easier to do. You can do custom fonts and things like that. That's another place for it. And a real good example, this is a good customer of ours up in Indiana, same guy. He was contracted by this company, this group, the, uh, where they at? St. Joseph's Township their EMTs to do these shirts. All of their EMTs were getting these shirts that were under their uniforms, right? And so they gave him the order form. They did them, he did them with, the, this is one of those ones he showed them a digital version and they liked the way the snake looked. So they did a digital version of it. And he asked them, do you mind if I try to sell the guys some other shirts? And they go, well, that's fine. You know, these are the ones we're buying for them. Knock it out. And the, he had to get approval for it. So he took the exact same graphic and instead of the flag of Indiana, Modify the colors a little bit, put the American flag in the background. Almost every single one of the guys bought one of these. Creative artwork, took you a couple minutes. One shirt, walked in, got approval. Now it could have gone the other way. They could have said, no, but we want to buy them for the guys. Either way, <coughs> be creative. Screen printing, that's not two clicks of the mouse. That's a whole new setup for screens. Because you notice where it was yellow and blue, it's red and blue. Right? It looks like the same graphic, but this is a whole other set of screens. You know, for embroiderers, there's some, some, some other stuff here with embroiderers. Most embroiderers aren't real fond of screen printers, right? It's just a, it's a cat and dog thing. They just, they're different type of people. You know, embroidery is pretty clean, screen printing is messy, you know, everybody, and, and not only that, you back and forth with each other. Your screen printer's always letting you down if you're an embroiderer, and your embroiderer's always letting you down if you're a screen printer. This allows you to take control and keep things in-house. I'd say a lot of our screen printers that I initially put in direct garment, it's not about profit, it's about control. Having control of it from A to B, all the way through the process. Mixed media decoration. This could be anything, embroidery, you're going rhinestone, whatever. Start mixing up and adding embroidery and rhinestone to direct garment, direct garment to embroidery, whatever. You start to set yourself apart in areas that other people who are pigeonholed. I'm a screen printer. I'm an embroiderer. It doesn't work in this marketplace. What happens when you walk into Walmart? You get your, your no nails done. You get a new pair of glasses while your cell phone is getting, you know, worked on. As you're eating the Big Mac that you picked up, right? While you're there to pick up some toilet paper, right? We're a one-stop shop type of mentality as people. Your business needs to be the same as well. Yeah, yeah, no mess. Cool application of it is applique to caps. You have somebody who wants caps with full color, they don't want to pay $50 to have it digitized, they don't want to pay 11 bucks a hat because it's a 4,000 stitch design. Get some tackle twill material, you guys know what tackle twill is? It's like a cotton type of material, it's kind of a cream color in most cases. Digitally print on it and applique it. You digitally print on a piece of applique this big, you're going to have a penny, penny and a half worth of ink on it, and you're going to run it down with about 150 stitches. Done. They have the illusion of full color. Like that, it's actually fashionable now, those type of ragged type of looks. You can also do the application of that stuff to apparel as well. It's, uh, you know, they'll do offset positions. The places would be kind of hard to get at to print or to embroider a large design on. You applique something that, you know, uh, who's an echo. You look at a lot of their designs, they're kind of these offset attachments and stuff on their garments and whatnot. <coughs> Who else? Entrepreneurs. Kiosk and malls, 
they can be successful, but unless you sign on for a year and you try to do Christmas and stuff, you might as well just go ahead and give them all the money you own because they're going to charge you ten, twelve thousand dollars a month. A lot of the growth area in our marketplace are these two areas. Online setups, design your own shirts. Limited, you know, they have a finite number of graphics, finite number of fonts, but Deco Network is a, is a partner of ours. They have, give you the ability to set up, you design your own, but also it allows you to set up affiliate stores. So you can go in. You go into your local school, every school in America is an unwilling t-shirt vendor. Because you've got so many kids, you know, that are buying t-shirts, they have t-shirts for homecoming, they have t-shirts for every event in the world, they have t-shirts for the chess club, they have t-shirts for the glee club. You're going to send the money in, and that means you're sending it with your kids, and they are children. Even my 18-year-old daughter loses checks on a regular basis, or cash, and then that money goes to a teacher, or a, a band leader, or a coach. And then he has to deal with the money. And then he has to get the money to the preferred vendor, or whoever it is from the apparel decoration company, or whoever he set that up with. The school is, you know, it just, it's a, it's a mess. With things like Deco Network, you can go into a school and say, listen, I want to handle all your t-shirt business. I'm going to set up a website on your website, scan it, and it looks like yours. It's a web store. Customers can go up and order the shirts right there online. They can pay with their credit card, pay with their debit card, and pay with an online check. And once a week, I'll deliver the shirts over to you from the week before. If you have an event like Homecoming where you might need 400 two-colored shirts, you put a cutoff. Orders have to be in a week before the delivery date. All shirts are ordered before that time. You're going to screen print them. They're going to be 12 bucks a piece. Anything after that point is going to come back. It's going to be digitally fulfilled. And they're going to be $17 a piece. You work out a deal with the school. What do they want to make per shirt? And then once a month, you walk into it with a check and a spreadsheet. So in the Glee Club sold nine shirts, football team bought 48 shirts, blah, blah, blah. They can disperse the money from there. All they had to deal with was handling the profit money on that. They didn't cycle money through the system, which is not something they're structured to do. Right? And you don't have poor teachers who get stuck with, crap, what did I do with that $40 this kid's getting? Right? And they're reaching in their own pocket. And you can do the same thing in churches, any, you know, small, re small restaurants, you want to give them a presence, of uh, having a, a web presence, social organizations, fraternal organizations. The next example would be niche markets. And what I mean by niche markets is any collection of loonies with a common interest that are kind of slightly off the grid, all right? It would have been Duck Dynasty a year ago, not Duck Dynasty today, all right? You know, people who were really focused into a really finite area. Uh, I, I used an example when I was teach, talking yesterday to our to new, new salespeople. If you're a, a car guy, what would you pay for a Ford shirt, Ford logo? Ten bucks? What if you had a Mustang? What would you pay for a, the pony? Maybe pay fifteen bucks for a pony, right? It's a Ford po Mustang. That's your car, right? Well, what if you had a 1965 Ford Mustang? Would you pay more for that shirt? Absolutely, right? Well, what if it was a red Ford Mustang? which is exactly like the one you have, except it's not a fastback, and yours is a fastback, and now we make it a fastback. Or what if it's your car, and I took the picture of it, and we're going to Photoshop it, put it on a shirt. I'm going out that tree. We have this, the, basically, the tree itself is Ford. One of the main branches is a Mustang. 65 Mustang, we're going a little bit further out on the branch. It happens to be red. Oh, and it's a fastback. Further out you go here, ka-ching, 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 ka-ching prices get bigger. DTG absolutely allows you to do that. And you may want to live back in here. Because when you start to get into the actual, you know, back in here, where you get to the point that you have to absolutely custom design every single one. And the same thing here. Dog lovers, cat lovers, faith-based shirts, whatever it is. You know, I love Obama shirts, I hate Obama shirts. Whatever they are. There's mark there are literally companies that have websites that are parallel. You know, they just take, they, they, they don't care which side of the coin you're on, they want both sides of the coin, but they s separate it out. Attitude shirts, pretty straightforward. You know, these type of things, people people sometimes just put, you know, I'm a stupid, whatever, right? And then there's the guy that says, I'm, gonna, I'm a stupid head arrow pointing up. I didn't understand <laughs> that. Um, but this is a huge marketplace. And this is something, again, that you can go back in to use the online designer like Deco Network, allow them to type anything. 
Um, I've got a customer that they're doing Bible verses. People have life verses. They go in and they choose those. Boom, they'll print a shirt out along with some other design that's, that's chosen. Clothing lines, pretty big thing nowadays, especially in the urban community. People are coming up with clothing line designs. They don't have the money to invest in having a thousand, two thousand shirts printed up. Being able to take a dozen or so of their designs and be able to sell them. Again, test the waters as well. And make each one, because a lot of times they're, they're eyeball placements, you can even give them the option to place them wherever they want on their garment with the specific graphic that kind of gives them some uniqueness to the, you know, what we call mass customization. Sporting goods, sportswear companies, probably one of the untapped markets right now because we mostly think of the uniforms and whatnot, which aren't DTG printable, but they wear t-shirts too. The parents wear t-shirts. Football players wear t-shirts underneath of their uniforms. They're, they're generally a cotton print based thing. And they're already in the school systems. They need to be going back and addressing what I, I talked about earlier on of trying to pick up all the other business that's not sports related. Photographers, great opportunity with photographers. I don't know if anybody here got a kid who's a senior or has had a senior real recently in high school. It's not like when I was a kid and like your mom bought the thirty-two dollar kit. I mean, they sell you everything. I mean, my, my wife's eyes got this big one. We sell like a thirty-five hundred dollar bill for stuff, which we tailor it down. But I mean, they print on wood, they print on aluminum, they print on these little strange books and stuff. They're expanding the ways they output from just traditional film. You know, a lot of them will go out and do events. They can do photo booth event, events and be able to print t-shirts out for people. And memory of shirts, and this is anybody. I don't, if you're in an urban area, IMO, they'll have a funeral and there will be 80 people show up in t-shirts with a picture of the person on it. Somebody's got to print them. I actually, a funeral home contacted me. At one point was looking about putting a director garment printer. Family reunion shirts, another thing. And by the way, a lot of times these two, if you've got a market for this, you probably have a market for this. Because the same people who do IMO shirts are also going to do family reunion shirts. I mean, that's pretty, pretty much an overview of the process. Who do you do it with? Keith's going to show you when we do <coughs> demos and stuff out here of how to actually print. One last thing I wanted to bring up and show you guys was um, people often get have questions about pricing and how to do this, right? When to screen print, when to inkjet print. And the answer is, let your customer tell you when. Their tolerance level. And let the system work. This is actually a system that's set up by this guy again. He's a, he's a beast. He does it. He really gets it. And this is the system he uses. You input here what it costs you to buy the garment, land it. He uses a markup factor of two. That means if you pay two and a half dollars for the shirt, you charge five dollars for it. Okay? Indirect to garment, the decision to discount your markup factor is purely a marketing decision. You don't have to do it. Because if you start to get to the point that you need to discount the markup factor on the garment, you're probably starting to flirt in that area where screen printing probably makes more sense. All right? He sets a flat rate, shop rate, per minute for his machine in dollars at one dollar. Costs him sixty dollars an hour to run his shop. All right, and he also figures in a dollar a minute for print time on a Viper. His experience has shown that that covers ink costs and labor costs as well. You can vary that yourself. When he does an inkjet direct to garment print, pre-flight, which is I call it the kick it in the butt fee. Ten dollars. It takes ten dollars to do. It takes him ten minutes to do anything to get the, the job in motion, and then three more minutes at a dollar a minute for pre-treatment time, loading, curing, just the offset stuff that doesn't fall into the print time. For screen printing, he charges thirty dollars a screen. The cool thing about this is, if let's say you're printing on a three dollar, and I'll provide this any of y'all who want. It. I've got this available. And let's say you only charge, what do you charge for screens? $10. $10? Because it was so competitive. Alright, okay, so 10 Alright, so charge $10 a screen. And then all of a sudden you scroll down here and it starts to give you an idea. So if you were screen printing that job and it was a three color job and they wanted 12 to 24, this actually even calculates in the screen fees. Alright? 
you would be charging eleven dollars and one cent a shirt. All right. So at three colors, and I come up here. Let's say it's a it's a smaller image here, five by five. At twenty four, it's kind of a push because your screen fees are so low. Yeah. Right. Watch what happens when you have more realistic because you're actually losing money at ten dollars. Right. Literally losing money because the film and the ink is going to cost you probably five or six bucks. The emulsion. And it, it's only for larger orders, right. like one and two colors, basically. Right. For a full color, we, we don't even consider it. We okay. use our DTG. DTG, right. Yeah. So let's go to a more realistic, I think in the market, probably $22, $25. Yeah. Go to $25. All right. Now, all of a sudden, look at that three color shirt. For $24, I'm going to get $14.76. To make it or you're selling it? I'm That's sorry. the sell price okay. based on your markup factors. All right. Over here, you know, for 24, for a 10 by, 10 by 12 image, mm -hmm. I can do 24 still cheaper than I can with screen printing, all right? But he has this grid that allows him to set up. And these numbers would be, it's based on what it costs you to do screens and whatnot. And by the way, we're talking three colors. When you start talking what we did up here, you're probably talking eight screens. Because that's simulated process you're gonna have to do to get that snake to come out tonal like it is. So if you do 12 to 24 shirts, it's more expensive to screen print 24 of them per shirt than it is a DTG print one of them. All right, this, is a, this allows you to build that window for your customers. It also allows you, to, you know, you share this information with them. You don't have to give them this calculator, right? But you share this information with them and they get to make the decision then. But this gives you some really good things. The things that are important in here to me is you've got to make money on the garment. Most people refuse to do that. His basic rule is he does nothing for less than $13. So if you come in and order one shirt, $13 to do that shirt, it's a $3 shirt, $6. All right, so we're at $19 now. And if it takes six minutes to print, that's another $6. It's a $25 shirt. The second shirt he's going to print going to be $12 more. Third shirt's going to be $12 more. Fourth shirt's going to be $12 more. Understand in direct to Garmin, if it takes five minutes to print the shirt and it costs you $5 to print it, it's going to take you 10 minutes to print two and cost you $10 to print two. It's going to cost you $50 to print 10 and it's going to take you 50 minutes. Okay. It's very easy math, very linear. In screen printing, it might take them an hour and 20 minutes to print the first shirt. Once they go in motion, they're going to gobble you up. And that's why this starts to tighten down at the end. So this is important stuff that how you become profitable is knowing where the battle lines are. The battle lines are generally in here. And the further, as you see, the further you go down here, the further you go out here and you can still be profitable with it. Okay.